Welcome back, everybody. And this is going to be our Algebra 2 uh, Linear Functions, Lesson 1, Direct Variation Whole Review, Part 1. Uh, for those of you who are back and watching us again, thank you so much for watching. I uh, hope the video has been helpful. And for those who are new to the channel, please uh, get, give this uh, video a like if you find it helpful, and leave comments in the comment section below. Subscribe so that you may notify when new videos are added to the channel. Okay, so we are working on direct variation. So a direct variation is a relationship between two variables in which one is a constant multiple of the other. In particular, when one variable changes, the other changes in proportion to the first. So as one variable goes up, the other one will go up as well too, and as one goes down, the other goes down in the same, uh, same proportion. Meaning, so the ratio of the variables will always be equal to the same value. So when we set them equal, we have the, rate, uh, the, the ratios will be lined up, which should always equal the same value. This value is called the constant of variation. And so we can see in this case, for example, would be y over x equals k, where k is the constant of variation. Okay, so our discussion, when we see direct variation, you're really going to be doing more proportions. Okay, so keep that in mind. So just so the wording will help us figure out how we set up our problems. In our first question we have for our homework, um, number one, in each of the following, the variable pair given are proportional to one another. Find the missing value. Okay, so we have in this case our first uh our first set of variables would be b is 8 and a is 16. So we kind of set up our ratio, b over a. And when b is 8, a is 16. We want to find that when b is, well, I'm not sure, well, we have to figure out the b value when a is 18. So one of the things I do recommend before doing a cross-multiplying situation <coughs> is going to simplify the fraction 8 over 16, which becomes 1 over 2. And so 1 over 2 equals the unknown over 18. Well, I know that 2 times 9 is equal to 18. Therefore, I'll multiply the numerator by the same value of 9. Therefore, the B value is going to be 9. And there you go. For part B, we have Y equals 10 when X equals 14. So we set up our, purport, our ratio, Y over X. And that's equal to 10 when X equals 14. So Y, y is 10, X is 14. We want to find out the unknown y value when x is 21. In the same way, we're going to simplify the 10 over 14 to get 5 over 7 equals unknown over 21. And we'll see in this case that 7 times 3 is 21. Therefore, multiply the numerator by 3. So 5 times 3 is 15. Our missing y value will be 15 in this situation. But let us see when w equals 2, when u equals 6, well, w over u equals 2 over 6. Well, in this case, unknown value over 15. Again, we're going to simplify the 2 over 6 to 1 over 3. And we know in this case, 3 times 5 is 15. Therefore, 1 times 5, well, is the unknown w value, w is equal to 5. And so that's the uh, answer for numbers, that's the answer for number 1, and the setup's pretty much the same way, okay? Be very careful when you set this up there, very careful. Question number 2. In the following exercises, the two variables given very directly, very important we see this, very directly means we're going to be setting up like a proportion, very similar to the last problem. So, when p equals 12, q equals 8. So I have p over q is equal to 12 over 8. We want to find the value of p when q is 6. In the same manner, we're going to simplify the fraction. Uh, 12 over 8, we divide both 12 and 8 by 4 to get 3 over 2 equals the unknown value over 6. Well, I multiply denominator by 3, I'll multiply numerator by 3. So the unknown value of p in this situation would be 9. Okay, for b, y equals 21 when x equals 9. So I have y over x is the ratio 21 over 9. And that's equal to the unknown value 
when x is equal to negative 6. Well, 21 over 9, again, that can be simplified. So we have here, in this case, uh, divide top bottom by 3 to get 7 over 3. Now, my denominator for the second one is negative 6, so 3 times negative 2. So I multiply top by negative 2. So the unknown value in this situation will be negative 2, actually. So y will equal to negative 14. Okay. All right. And the same way, we have z. Or z is negative 5 when w goes 2, so z over w. So negative 5 over 2 is equal to the unknown value over 8. Well, here we just multiply denominator by 4. We multiply numerator by 4. So the z value is negative 5 times 4, or negative 20. OK? All right, then. So again, when we see uh, when we, say, when we see a problem that says the variables vary directly, we should be thinking proportion, okay? Think proportion. So, question number three. If x and y vary directly, and y equals 16 when x equals 12, which of the following equations correctly represents the relationship between x and y? Okay, so it says here y and x vary directly. So y over x. Okay, so 16 over 12. Okay, so we have that, and we can simplify this so that we will get y over x is equal to 4 over 3. Now, we want to talk about relation between x and y. So we could cross multiply and get, in this case, 3y is equal to 4x. Well, we don't see that as a choice, though. We're definitely not going to add. We're not going to add items. So, um, we definitely. It doesn't look like we get choice two. Y plus x equals twenty-eight. Doesn't make any sense, though. And I don't think I can get that relationship of x times y equals one ninety-two. Okay. It looks like that for the last part, either choice one or choice three, we have to get y by itself. To get y by itself, we divide both sides by three here. And so we're going to get, in this situation, y is equal to 4 over 3x. And so it will not be choice 1, but instead we'll pick choice 4. Now, we'll notice in this case that this direct variation, y equals 4 thirds x, that it's going to be, if, if we wrote as an equation of a line, it would be a line that's going to, looks like it has no, um, has no wire set, or well, the wire set is going to be, in this case, 0. So, on one way to describe a direct variation would be, graphically, would be the following. A graphic representation of a direct variation will be an oblique or slanty line that passes through the origin, okay? So, that's one way to represent a direct variation graphically, all right? So, or as a function, as a function, all right, our direct variation will be a linear function that passes through the origin and has a, has a slope that's, that's not, that will not be zero or undefined. Okay, well, technically it's undefined. It can't be a function that's a, okay? All right. Question number four. The distance Max bikes moves is directly proportional to how many rotations his bike's crankshaft has made. If Max's bike moves 25 feet after two rotations, how many feet will the bike move after 15 rotations? Okay, well, what we have here in this case is it says here that the the bike varies directly, uh, the, the distance varies directly with the number of rotations. So we'll write down in this case distance and rotations. Please remember, ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about the idea of directly proportional, we're saying a proportion here. And they tell us that max bike moves 25 feet for every two rotations. Well, how many feet, I'll call it n feet, will we get after 15 rotations? 
in this situation, because we can't really, this is our, our OT, no, not, not, not NT, sorry. So we'll try to make it look, oh, there you go, okay. So, uh, we're going to use, a, we're gonna, we can't really simplify the 25 over 2, so we're going to cross multiply. So here we go. So we have 25 times 15 is equal to 2n. All right, so 25 times 15, I'm going to multiply the side here. 5 times 5 is 25, carry the 2. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12. And of course, 1 times 25 is 25. We get 375. So we have 375 is equal to 2n. Here we divide both sides by 2. And therefore, the number of feet that it's going to travel will be 375, well, 3 divided by 2 is 1, remainder 1. 17 divided by 2 is is going to be 8, remainder 1, and then 15 divided by 2 is going to be 7, remainder 1, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. So we get, in this case, 187.5 feet, okay? And we will maybe end the sentence here, just to end with a sentence, that Mike Spike moves 187.5 feet after 20, uh, over, after 15 rotations. Sorry, it's kind of blocked by the number here. Rotations and rotations. Okay. Of the crankshaft. Okay, there you go. All right, so let me just make sure I uh, use the correct, uh, here, the mic's, Apostrophe here, so okay. So um, we want to make sure that we we definitely have the answer of numerically is 187.5. Definitely, that's true. We also want to be able to also end with the sentence just in case we are asked to to be able to show the understanding of the what the question is asking for. So the answer may not always be the just numerical answer may not be the only thing we're looking for. We might have to describe what do these numbers represent. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of part one of our homework review of lesson one. And um, please leave any questions or comments in the comment section below. Look forward to any any feedback. We really appreciate hearing from you guys. Okay, again, please give this video a like if you found it helpful and subscribe to our channel. Okay, and of course, if you are not fully remote, you might want to consider going fully remote because in this case, um, when the weather gets not so great, it's not gonna be very pleasant. Uh, we're told that all the windows will be wide open no matter how cold it is outside for the ventilation. Consider that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, not too late to do that, though. In any case, ladies and gentlemen, good to good to uh, hope to hope to see you guys again, or at least hope that you see me again on the next video. All right, take care and be safe.